Before I start this video, I want to say this. I have nothing against consoles. Consoles are a great way to get into gaming and they get the job done. A console gamer is the exact same as a PC gamer. There is but one difference between us, and that is the platform we play on. Now why is the PC the superior gaming platform? Well, there are many reasons, and I'm going to go into all of them, but before I start, I need to define objective and subjective, because I will say later, the things in this video will be objective reasons, not my opinions. To be objective is to not be influenced by personal feeling or opinions in considering and representing facts. To be subjective is based on or influenced by personal feelings, tastes, or opinions. With that in mind, let's start the video. The first one is better graphics. On the PC, you get to decide how you wish to play your games, and depending on the hardware and the settings in which you'd like to game at, you can achieve a higher graphical fidelity than anything else on the market as of yet. Console graphics will always look good, but they can never best the capabilities of what a PC can, because there will always be someone out there with a better machine. There will also be graphics enhancing mods that can only be found and downloaded on this platform. Higher resolutions are also more prevalent here, and you have the option to expand the visuals in any way you like. With a new monitor, a TV, a new graphics card, the choice is yours. Options of freedom is a really big thing, and that's because the PC is not owned nor dictated by anyone but yourself. So you make all of your own decisions. The second point is free online. Because there aren't any companies trying to dictate the PC market, PC gamers play most online games for free. The reason I say most is because some MMOs do have monthly or yearly fees, but those are strictly limited to those games, and not the entire platform. If a DRM did try to force us to pay monthly fees, we'd simply buy our games somewhere else. The PC has a huge and healthy ecosystem. There's competition everywhere, and as I said before, we control how we wish to play our games. We wouldn't stand for anti-consumerism. Another point with this is dedicated servers. No matter where you are, you can host a server and play strictly with your friends or join a server made by someone else. These are generally free and again, gives you more options in multiplayer games. The third point is mods. Though there are mods on consoles, you're restricted as to how many you can download, which mods you can use, and for what games. On the PC, almost every game has mods for it that can change the entire game or just make cats in the game look better. Mods that allow you to fly, or swing around the city like Spider-Man, or mods that make the game look brand new, and though I wish a lot more of these mods could come to consoles, it would be impossible to port them over. And even if they were able to be ported over, the game may not run the way it should because of how games for consoles are optimized and how mods are optimized. If the console is stressed even a little bit, the game may simply crash or play at 8 frames a second. On the PC, however, you can change the games to your liking and play them over and over a different way every time, expanding the life of your favorite video games. Now before I move on to the next topic, I do have to say that there are mods made for malicious intent. Mods that are developed to help you cheat, and these hacks are something all gamers despise. Hacks appear on every platform, and you'll probably run into hackers on every platform you play on. The fourth point has to do with better sound quality. With the fact that you can upgrade your system as you please, you can access top-of-the-line sound cards, speakers, or headphones. On other platforms, you have a more limited choice. You also can't pick a higher quality sound card. Fifth, we have better controls. Not only is the mouse and keyboard one of the best and most reliable controllers we have, along with many renditions of them to enhance the gaming experience, but on the PC you also have the ability to use your favorite controller. Any and all controllers can be used on the PC, so that no matter how you wish to play your games, you can. On a console, you're limited to the ones the companies you bought the console from give you, or you can use third-party controllers which are generally different renditions of the same. Six, we have backwards compatibility. Every game ever released on PC is still here for us to play. When a new generation of graphics cards come out, we aren't locked away from our old treasures like consoles when a new generation of those come out. Many may wonder why you'd even want to play your older games, but nostalgia can always get the best of us, and it's nice being able to play every video game you've ever loved on one machine. Games that never came to PC, console exclusive games, are playable as well with emulators like Dolphin for GameCube and Wii games, PCSX1 and 2 and RPCSX3 for PlayStation 1 through 3 games, Project 64 for Nintendo 64 games, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, NES, DS, Wii U, Virtual Boy, PSP, Dreamcast, Sega Saturn, Sega Genesis, and even newer consoles will all be emulated so no video game is ever forgotten. All games playable on one system, and before you ask if emulation is piracy, no. It's not. Page 11 of this document goes over the legalities of emulation, and I will put it in the description. The seventh point is more games. 
The PC has more games than every console in history combined, especially with all the emulators I talked about before. But on consoles, there are full genres of games missing, like real-time strategies, MOBAs, strategies, MMOs, MMORPGs, indies, and though there are a few of these games on consoles from these genres, there are multitudes of these missing. You could say, well, I don't want to play those games anyway, but we're being objective here, and that is a subjective statement. The eighth point is upgradable hardware. On the PC, you have the ability to control when and what you would like to upgrade to. On consoles, the only upgrades that are really possible are generally hard drive space. Other than that, you have to buy a new generation of consoles to maintain gaming at the console standard technology curve. But on PC, you could buy a low-end graphics card and play all your games at lowest settings. A standard graphics card and play your games at mid-high settings. Or a high-end card and play your games at the highest settings. It just depends on you as a gamer. There is a myth that you need to upgrade every day, month, year, what have you, but this myth is simply that. You fully control when you want to upgrade and there's nothing forcing you to upgrade. Recommended system specs don't hinder you as much as you might think. Point number 9 is frame rate. As most gamers know, frame rate is extremely important. On the PC, you're not locked out of frame rate as you can play all of your games at 30 FPS, 60 FPS, 120, 144. The choice is yours. Frame rate not only makes your games look and feel smoother, but also helps gamers with motion sickness and makes your games feel more responsive. Speaking of motion sickness, FOV sliders and colorblind options are more prevalent on PC. And again, if games do not come with FOV sliders, frame rate adjusters, and colorblind options, you can normally mod them in. More options to the consumer is never a bad thing. And lastly, point 10. PC is cheaper. If you build a computer, you get to decide how much you want to spend on it. Every day I get comments from my subscribers asking me to give them parts lists for around $400, $600, $1,000, sometimes even around $200, and I send them a build every time. No matter how much they spend on a PC though, they're not forced into paying yearly for an online service. They're not forced to buy games for $60. On Steam, games are generally cheaper on day one. Not only that, but online key stores typically sell games for half price even on day one. PC gamers have more options to them in almost every aspect, and in the long term, and even the short term, PC gaming will save you more money. Now I addressed the big ones, but the ones I did not mention are as follows. Quicker patch support, higher skill ceiling, typically more players per server, more applications for everyday use, multitasking, game development, pretty much anything you can think of you can do on a computer, especially playing games. There will always be those out there who say things like, well, those features are nice, but I don't want them. Therefore, it is an objective. But that's the very definition of a subjective statement. Take The Binding of Isaac, one of my favorite games. Let's say someone played both the original and Rebirth and says, well, I prefer the original. The new one is not objectively better in any way. It wouldn't make sense. Rebirth plays at a higher frame rate, allows you to use any control you want, has every feature from the old game and more, has deeper settings and customizability, it's more upgradable than the original, it has vastly more exclusive content, free multiplayer, mods, and better sound quality. I mean, with an argument like that, how could you possibly dispute? But the point is, nobody is forcing you to switch platforms. No respectable person would put you down for gaming on a different system. Just game the way you want to game, but there is a superior platform, and right now, it's the PC. Perhaps one day there will be a better platform, and when that day comes, you better believe I'll be making the switch. More options for the consumer? That's what I'm all about.